My respected brothers and sisters, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for letting us gather here in such a beautiful gathering where we see people of all ages, both young and old. It is actually very rare to see so many youth sitting in a, uh, in a Jummah gathering. A true example that Sheikh Abdullah has uh, set here, you know, accommodating for the youth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set stages of development in life. And there are certain things that are important for development. When a child is growing up, he takes a certain steps, and those steps are important. You know, there are the, maybe we have some new parents in here, or you might remember from your time when your children were young. When a kid goes from just uh, being on the floor to walking, and they skip the crawling, they actually have a developmental gap later on in life. I had no idea about this. A doctor explained, I was so happy, I said, doctor, you have no idea what happened. Said, what happened? My daughter, she's walking. She skipped the crawl. And she said she's going to have eyes to hand coordination issues later. That step is important. Similarly, one of the important developmental steps in life is to have good friends in life, or just have friends in life. We can't live in silo, can we? So we need to be surrounded with friends. The people you sit with, people you talk to, share ideas with, they inspire you. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explaining the impact on a person, a friend has on a person. Listen very carefully. A person is on the faith of their friend. Prophet ﷺ says, a person is on the faith of a friend, so each and every one of you should be very careful who you choose as your friend. Why? Because your friend is the one that guides you. They show you things. Your vision may be limited in what you are seeing at home and what your parents might have taught to you, but your friends show you more possibilities. You may have a friend that looks as your subject as my, my dear uh, youth friend sitting in the back. You may have a friend that look at your curriculum like, hey, let's take a look. What subjects did you pick? And like, oh, hold on, you got algebra? I got pre-math. How long does it take you to do homework? Like, oh, it takes me like half an hour to do homework. It takes me 10 minutes. 10 minutes pre-math, I'm done. They show you different possibilities. Versus you have another friend, they're like, hey, did you select that IT class? Did you get that algebra class that you were supposed to get? And you're like, no, 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 I was holding back. I really didn't want to do IT. I thought it was hard. Like, no, 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 it's not hard. Let's go. Let's do it together. An impact a friend has on us. And those impact can be lifelong. You may want to pray Salah. You may be the one that says, it's time for Salah. We're going to pray Salah. And your friend is like, uh, you're going to do that thing again? Does that mean you're going to go to the bathroom and take a bath with your foot again? And then you're like, oh, you know, dude, I got to do this, right? But you still have that friend. Every time you pray, he makes that comment. It's like, oh, you're going to do that thing again. And at some point, you're like, you know what? I'll just pray at home. And then he calls you at home or he texts you. Nobody calls anymore. I get it. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm praying. He's like, oh, so you don't want to play right now? You're like, uh, fine, I don't have to pray. You understand that impact? You may not want to do anything haram. You may be that goody-goody two-shoe of the family that has always done the right. You have no inclination to even do haram. But your friend 
on the other hand, he has indulged himself in doing some haram activities. And even though you didn't do it, next day you catch up in the school and you're like, hey, what'd you do on the weekend? Like, oh, I was at home, I met some family, we went for pizza, and the guy's like, guess what I did over the weekend? All right? And I don't want to talk about those things. But you get the point. Like, guess what I did over the weekend? I hung out with the boys, and we did this, and we did this. Felt so good. You have no idea, man. And next weekend, you're asking your parents, you're like, oh, you really got to go out? Because I'd rather be with my friends. I want to do what they were doing. All right? The idea is for them to, that, that company to spark an interest in you. For you to even think that if I do that, I could be cool too. I don't have to be part of the nerd club anymore. I could be part of the cool club at that point. That's why, my dear friends, it's very important for us to choose our friends very carefully and for us to associate ourselves with the right people. An Arabic poet had said, if you want to get to know somebody, don't look into them. Look into their friends. Because they are whatever their friends are. They are influenced by the people they associate themselves with. Prophet wasallam. he further explained this to us. An impact a friend has upon us. And you may think that this is a dead topic, like, okay, friends are friends. It is good enough of a topic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in the Quran, that who your friend should be. It has an impact on your akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that those people that you thought were your BFFs, those people that you thought were so close to you, on the day of judgment, in fact, they will be your enemies. Unless they're God-fearing. We're in this time right now where we're going back to school. We're entering in different community as an adult maybe. Maybe at work. But especially for youth, it's a very dynamic time going from elementary school to high school, going from elementary school to middle school, middle school to high school, you kind of want to puff your chest a little bit when you walk in. They're like, hey, I just want to prove myself who I am, just so everybody knows I'm the cool kid too. And sometimes we let that sway. We let that kind of take us for a ride. And we forget what just happened with me. A person who was so good to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of a sudden we don't even think twice before we commit a sin. Because society has made bad look good, is it not? Have you ever heard somebody say, oh my God, have you looked at that guy? He's so bad. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, dude, that guy, he's bad. I want to be bad just like him. <laughs> That's her criteria. All those that are smirking, they know what I'm talking about. Like, I want to be just like him. Bad has become the criteria to be somebody supreme. Somebody people look up to. Give up those glasses, those jeans, right? Prophet sallallahu explaining to us, the example and an impact, the influence of a friend has upon us. Prophet is saying that an example of a good friend is like walking into a perfume shop. You may not spray yourself, but when you walk out, people will be like, you smell good. What did you have on? Like, no, nothing. I just went into the perfume shop. And a company of a bad person is like walking into a blacksmith shop. You walk in and you kind of protect yourself. You're like, oh, I don't want to get my clothes dirty. But you're there for like an hour at the blacksmith shop. 
you walk out, what do you think will happen to your clothes? Have you ever been to a barbecue party? Have you ever been to a barbecue party, come back, and your clothes not smell like smoke? It's not possible. It just won't happen. Our brains are wired to be inspired and influenced by others. So we have to be very careful who we let near to us. If you want to be good, look for a good friend. If you want to stay away from haram, then you have to look towards those people that do not indulge or towards haram. And one very important point to make over here is that not everybody's a friend. Some are just associates. You might think that we're talking about you going back to school or going back to work and be like, hey, dude, since you're not on the right path, we can't talk. That's not the point here. They are the people that we are going to keep company with. Those will be the folks that we will show our good character to. But they're not our friends. Somebody might come to you, and this is a very important uh, point for my young friends. Somebody might come to you and say, hey, can we be friends? Like, do you want to join the cool club? Like after the school, when the rest of the kids go home, we got a little huddle. We meet behind the school and we do some cool activities there. Be cool. And that's the time for you to be like, mm-mm, I'm good. Not everybody who wants to be your friend deserves to be your friend. So you have to have a criteria. You and I will have to come up with a criteria of who I want to be my friend. Prophet Sallallahu was also asked this question. The Sahaba of Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh, Prophet Sallallahu what's that criteria? Who should be our companion? Who should be our friend? Listen to this very carefully. And it might sound like a very high bar, but at least we have a North Star. Prophet Sallallahu said, your friend should be the one when he speaks, when you meet with him, he reminds you of Allah. When he speaks, your knowledge increases. You look at his actions and it reminds you of Akhirah. That is the criteria, North Star, high standard bar that Prophet Sallallahu set for us. We may not be the person that are always particular about our salah in masjid or otherwise. I may not be that person, my young friends, that always open up the Quran. I may not be that person who is always good to my parents. But if I associate myself to those good people, maybe I come home and say, you know what? Today I was with Majid. Man, I love the way he prays. I want to pray too. Today I was with Abdullah. He recited a Quran ayah for me. It just had an impact. I want to open Quran too. So either be inspired by those, my friends, or take it a notch up and become inspiration for the others. Where your actions have an impact on other people's life. Have you ever thought about a moment in life where you were at a spiritual high? Maybe coming back from Umrah. Sheikh and I were just talking about, you know, Hajj and the return from Hajj. I'm sure a lot of people here have been to Hajj. You feel that emotional high or spiritual high at that time? My young friends may be doing Ramadan, even though it seems hard to fast, but you feel that emotional, the spiritual high at that time. And then all of a sudden we drop. It's like dropping off the cliff. Ponder over that for a second. If you think about it, in usual and often cases, we fall off the spiritual cliff 
because of the influence of our friends. We weren't around the right folks that helped me stay close, stay together, and to stay high. I came back from Umrah, and the friends was like, all right, how long before you lose that kufi? Right? So those are not the friends we want to be around. I'm going to make a, I think we're a little short on time. I'm going to make a very profound example of an impact of a friend. Pay very close attention to this. Have you ever heard of a story of Prophet وسلم, praying in Mecca and a person came and put the guts and the remains of camel on him? Have you heard of that story? Would it shock you if I told you he was at one point the Sahabi of Rasulullah? Shocking. Let me tell you a story about a person. He was one of the leaders of Quraysh. His name was Uqba bin Abu Mu'ayt. A businessman and a trade man. Very successful in what he did. Every time he would come back from doing trades, he would throw a feast, he would throw a party. He was, felt good. At the same time, he was very humble in nature. Very humble in nature, but at the same time, he liked having his clique, he liked having his friends. Prophet wasallam, he'd been mentoring him, grooming him for a while. He had his eye on him. You know, Prophet wasallam, a da'i always has an eye on people. It's like, you know what, I got an eye on this one. He had his eye on Uqba bin Abu Mu'ayyad. One time, Uqba came back from his trade and he threw a big, big dinner party. Prophet Wasallam, he was like, you know what, he's almost there. He's almost there. So Prophet Wasallam came near to him and said, Oh Uqba, today I will not accept your feast. Today I will not eat until you take shahada. And he said it out of love. That doesn't mean we go around telling our friends, hey man, I ain't hanging out with you if you don't take shahada here first. He'd been mentoring him. They had a relationship. Uqba said, oh Prophet of Allah, I like what you say. I, I understand and like the message of Islam. And Uqba said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna ka Muhammad Rasulullah. He accepted Islam on the hands of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you imagine? He saw Prophet, he accepted Islam, he was in the fold of Islam in the time of Prophet. What does that make him? Makes him the Sahabi of Rasul. His foot is in Jannah. His one foot is already in Jannah. Does that protect him? Next day, Ubay bin Khalf, his close buddy, He's like, Uqba, what is this I'm hearing? You used to be cool, now you become Salihin. They, they wouldn't call him Muslim, they call him Salih. What am I hearing this? He's like, yeah, man. I heard the message. It had an impact on my heart. I like what it is. So I accepted Islam from my heart. Ubay, who was also a mushrik, he said, listen, Nukba, it's a decision time, bro. Either you be with cool kids or you be with them. If you accept Islam, you're out. You can't hang out with us no more. We won't come to your party and you won't come to our party. We can't talk. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> that friend was Obey, Obey bin Khalf, enemy of Islam. Had such an impact on him. He says, no problem guys, I give up Islam. Obey bin Khalf said, that's not enough man. You did the unthinkable, that's not enough. Show your loyalty by spitting on the face of the Prophet. Sahabi Rasul. 
impact of a friend. He went to Prophet Sallallahu and he spit on the noble face of Prophet Sallallahu Now there's two riwayahs there. One said that actually he spat on the face of the Prophet. Prophet Sallallahu turned his face and wiped his face. The other riwayah says that this spit did not make it to the face of the Prophet, actually reversed on his face and burnt him. They're both riwayahs. Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Ubay? Oh, oh, Uba? What happened? He says, Oh, Prophet of Allah. Oh, oh, Muhammad. My friends don't want me to be Muslims. They want me in their circle. Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Uba? You've been so disgraced that Allah will not even give you the death in your home city. You will die outside of Makkah. And he said, Obey bin Khalf who enticed you. Prophet ﷺ, even in battles, would not kill anybody. He would injure them, put them down. He wouldn't kill them. Prophet ﷺ, on the battle of Badr, he says, where is Obey? And the Sahaba showed him where Obey was. Prophet ﷺ personally went and put an end to him. Uqba, who was in his home, Obey and them, they said, hey man, let's go, we gotta go for battle. Like, whoa, whoa, no, no, no. He said, I leave the city, I'm gonna die outside the city. So I will live here forever. As long as I don't leave the city, I'm good. Obey is like, no, you don't know what kind of army we got. Once we beat them and defeat them, we're gonna party. And I need my party friends with me. You're known for partying. He says, all right. And he, in fact, went. And in the Battle of Badr, Ali, he put an end to Uqba bin Abu Mu'ayd, who was once called anhu. But because of the impact and the influence of a friend, had a fatal impact on him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran sent ayahs on this incident. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, only if you could see addressing us, not addressing him, addressing us. Only if you could see that the oppressor on the day of judgment will say, I wish I took the pathway of the Muhammad. I listened to so and so. Let me, let me rephrase that. I should have taken the pathway, not associated, not be close, just take the pathway of what Prophet showed us, I took the association of, who was it that I took association of? Was it, was it, was it Kent? Was it Joe? Ah, can't think of him. Allah said, he is so and so. That's what a person will say that day. That's how negligible that person's name will be. That the person will say, I took association of so and so. And look, where that has led me. And today, my friends have led me away from Islam, and shaitan is truly deceptive. Can you imagine? In Surah Safat, and we'll wrap with this, in Surah Safat, you know, just like we're sitting in the back over there, all, all the cool dudes and all the friends here. In Surah Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very profound. On the day of judgment, us, inshallah, we're going to hang out in Jannah. And those cool kids in the back, you're going to hang out in Jannah. And all of the, you guys. And then as you guys are talking, you'll be like, hey, Jamil, Jamal, Akbar, Abdullah, Abdurrahman, Hamza, whoa, we're all here. Where's that other kid we used to hang out with? Like, ooh, what are you talking about? Dude, Kent. Remember we used to hang out with him? What about the other person we used to hang out with? It's like, yeah, we don't see him. Where's he at? And the angel will ask. Because remember, it's Jannah. So whatever you ask, you can get. Like, do you want to see where they are? And we will say, yeah, we want to see where they are. Like, we hung out with them and all that. And a window will open up into the Jahannam. And we will be shown, like, look, right there. And we will look like this and be like, whoa. 
we will be in Jannah, safe, no negative feeling, but that fire will amaze us still. And we're like, whoa. Not whoa as in, dude, let me help you get out. Not that kind of whoa. Whoa as in, dude, you almost took me there. Make sense? You almost took me there. You know why I use the word almost? Because when you were enticing me, I was actually thinking about it. You almost took me there. And that person will turn around. He's already in Jannah. He already has the gift of forgiveness. He will never die again. He will turn around and he will be like, will we never die again? He will enjoy Jannah like he just entered for the first time because he just saw Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being one of those that get enticed, from being one of those that instigate, from being one of those that sway away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In recap, I'll just mention, be very careful who you take as your friend. Have a criteria. And I'm not talking about people you associate with, but the people you actually take as your friend. Understand what are your goals in life. And if that other person does not have the same goals in life, he or she is not really a friend, is he? Be always God-fearing in your action. And when those things come towards you, those invitations to do bad comes towards you, put your hand out. Say, I'm good. I was just teaching my daughter some self-defense techniques uh, the other day, that when something comes towards you that you don't feel good about, you say, please keep a distance. Isn't that what we do? Self-defense, simple. Like, please keep a distance, don't come close. Have that mental preparedness. When something is coming towards you that you know is not good for you, say, I'm sorry, please keep a distance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to act upon what has been said, what has been heard. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallama, bihamdika. Nashadu la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiru kantu billahi. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, he nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nasta'afiruhu, wa nu'minu bihi, wa natawakkalu alayhi, wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina, wa min sayyiati amalina, man yadillahu fala mudillalahu, wa man yudlilu fala hadiyala, wa nashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la, wa nashadu anna sayyidina wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim, inna allaha wa malaikata yusalluna ala nabi, يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأزدقهم حيان عثمان وأغضاهم علي وفاطمة سيد النساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيد شباب سيد شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد الرسول رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين ربنا أعطينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا والذرية تنا قرة عيون وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اغفر لي وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم إنك عفو اللهم إنك عفو اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فافوني يا كريم اللهم عايز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عايز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عايز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر مسلم مسلمين في كل زمان ومكان يا رب العالمين ربنا وتقبل دعاءه سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وقيم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة
حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا